All right, so in this video, we're going to look at distributive property using area. Um, I'm going to kind of start with some examples and build into that with writing some expressions. So when we write expressions, we're not actually going to give ourselves an answer, so, so to speak. Like, the answer is the expression. For example, like if I said find the area of any rectangle, well, it would be length times width. Oftentimes, that is written more in, like, the cursive style. Length times w. Um, so down here, uh, I would say I have 4 and 5. So the expression itself would just be 4 times 5. And I'm going to use the dot to represent multiplication because you can see that when we get down here, we're going to use this x as a variable, and that just will be confusing. So in 2, we have m times 7. So you actually you don't write m times 7. The, tr the standard way of doing that is you write 7m. It's like if this value was, say, apples, and you had 7 rows, or in this case columns, of apples, then you would say 7 apples, so 7m. This is 3 times a, so you write that as 3a. So these here are your answers, which are just expressions. Note that we do not say 4 times 5 equals 20. We don't need to. The expression is just 4 times 5. That's all it's asking us to do in the directions. Um, 4 is a little bit tricky because you're saying x times x. And the way I like to think of this is kind of like, say I was doing 3 times 3. I'm just going to zoom in here so I don't take up too much space. If I was doing 3 times 3, well, that equals 9. But how do I write 9 without writing 9? Well, I could say that's 3 squared. So when I come back to the x, I could say x times x equals x squared. So the expression is x squared. So now, in these next set, it wants us to look at the area of each box in the pair. So in this case, when we try to find the area of each individual box, we're just writing two expressions. So here, we do 4 times x, so it's 4x, and this would be 4 times 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. So we'd have 12 square units and 4x square units. And then as we work our way over here to this, a times 7, oops, 7 times a is 7a is the area, and this would be 9, and this side's also 7, so 9 times 7 is 63 square units is the area there. This one is going to be very similar to number 4. We have x times x, so this is x squared, and then x 2 times x, so this would be 2 x, and that would be the area of each individual rectangle there. So as we build on this, we've started out writing expressions for areas of rectangles. Then we started writing out expressions for two rectangles where they had a common side length. So this one had 4 and 4, right? Now we're going to kind of look at that whole like x plus 3 thing we had going on. And it says write the expression that represents the total length of each segment. So in this case, I have x and 9. So the total length would be x plus 9. x plus 9, that's the total length of the line. If x is 5, it's 5 plus 9. If x is 7, it's 7 plus 9. Over here, I have x and then 4. So first I have x, then I have 4. So x plus 4 more. And then on 10, I have a, and then 2 more. So a plus 2. Again, use this video to go as much as you have. If you feel like you got a hang of this and want to try some, try some of these problems on your own and then come back and check your work. This next section, we want to figure out the area of each rectangle as the product of length times width and also as a sum of the areas of each box. Okay, so we're going to do length times width and a sum of the area of each box. So this one's already done for us. So area as the product would be 5 times x plus 7. Area is the sum, 5x plus 35, because that did 5 times x. 5 times 7 is 35. That's where that number came from. 5 times x is 5x. 
and then x plus 7 is right here, times 5. Got it. So in this problem, we have x times, so area is a product, so just say x would be one of them, and then your, your length, and then your width would be x plus 12. So x times x plus 12. And then area as the sum would be x times x, which is x squared, plus x times 12, which is 12x. So x squared plus 12x is the area as the sum. 13 is very similar to the number we just did in 12. a times a, or a, the first one is a, area as a product, is a times a plus 8. So you do length times width, and then you do each rectangle individually. So a times a would be a squared, and a times 8 would be 8a. So a squared plus 8a. So what this, this process has been doing is it's writing these products as the sum uses the distributive property. What do I mean by that? Let's go back and take a look here. So it might be a little bit easier to see using this first example. So the area of the product is 5 times x plus 7. Well, the distributive property says 5 times the quantity of x plus 7, you can distribute the 5 across the addition, meaning you can do 5 times x, or 5x, plus 5 times 7, or 35. So in this case, 5 times x plus 35, these are equivalent expressions because they find the area of the same like rectangles. How does that make sense over here? Well, you have x times x plus x times 12. So x times x is x squared plus x times 12 is 12x. So let's go down here, and these ones just says to use the distributive property, rewrite, rewrite each expression as a sum, and it says you may want to draw um, rectangles on a separate page to follow technique above. I am not going to draw rectangles. I'm just going to go through and explain my thinking in solving these last eight problems. All right, so I'm going to solve these out of order and do these even ones first, then go over to the next column and do those ones. So the first one is 4 times x plus 7. So 4 times x and 4 times 7. So it would be 4x plus 28. Negative 2 times x plus negative 2 times 4. This is tricky because we have a negative. So this means that it would be negative 2x. And then negative 2 times 4 is actually going to be negative 8. So we can change this to a minus 8. a times a is a squared. And then a times a minus 1 is going to be minus a a squared minus a, which is 1a, but we don't have to write the 1 when we just have a single. We don't write that in front of the variable. Negative 4 times a is negative 4a, and then negative 4 times a minus 4 is actually negative times a negative, so it becomes a positive, plus, and then 4 times 4 is 16. And over here, 15, 17, 19, 20. 7 times x is 7x. 7 times minus 3 is going to be minus 21. x times x is x squared. x times plus 9 is going to be plus 9x. 3m times m. This is tricky. 3m times m. You're really saying m times m is m squared, and the 3 stays the same. 3m squared. And then 3m times a plus 2, it's going to stay positive, and it would be 3 times 2 is 6, and the m will just stay there, so it'll be 6m. 3m squared plus 6m is that what that would equal. And then this one down here is a times a is a squared minus, or then it's a times a minus 12, so it only be in minus again. a times 12 is 12a, and that would be and this is how you would use the distributive property to find equivalent expressions and area um, with the variables in there, distributing out. Some of these with these squares are a little bit more complicated. Uh, hopefully you follow along and learn something additional here.